I can say hi if you want, but yeah, that would be cool. Okay. <sighs> Are you ready? Yeah. Did you start YouTube? Yeah, it started. Oh, okay. Let me just fix this. One. Hey, everybody. Ben here. We're live right now in our backyard. I wanted to hop on here today and do a live stream, mainly focused on uh, gardening stuff. So, you know, we're hearing Anthony talk about over and over and over and over again about the food shortage stuff. Is the YouTube one working? Hold on. And you're not going to um, see people if they comment on Instagram because it's hidden right now. I know YouTube says it's streaming. Okay. Do you want to be able to see if there if people write you stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see? Yeah, I can see. I gotta move this, but yeah, I can see. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, so yeah, what I was what we we're talking about is gardening stuff today. So that's why I wanted to go live. And I'm just saying hi. Ashley's here too. <laughs> She's got the baby. But we wanted to um, talk about gardening stuff, you know, because we hear Anthony talk about over and over and over again about how important it, it's going to be to be able to produce your own food, right? If there's food shortages and we're going to these grocery stores and we can't find food, what are we going to do, right? And everybody within the medical medium community knows how important fruits and veggies and herbs and wild foods are, right? So if we learn how to grow this stuff, then we don't have to rely on these stores and we can grow certain things in our yards and consume them. And that, that, that food that's being grown is grown for you. Right. So if you're dealing with symptoms and you're dealing with conditions, that food that you're growing in your yard is being grown for you. Every day you walk out and you water that plant every day you walk out, maybe you say a little something in the yard. Maybe you touch that plant. Well, now that plant is being grown for you. Right. So it's really important that we get that food that's grown for us in our bodies. So the minerals and the vitamins that's in that food is then going to, to healing our bodies. So, yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. So we had been, we have our YouTube station, that root life, which is mainly focused on medical medium content. And then we have our other channel, which is new and it's called that gardening channel. And it's going to be mainly focused on just gardening content. And what I wanted to do was keep it, keep all the videos on there uh, short, you know, so they're just like one minute videos of how to do certain things in the garden. And my goal is, is to get one out each week and some weeks I'll even get more out. But um, I hope that it will inspire people to start a garden <laughs> and then what i want to do is i want to do lives like this where you guys can ask me questions and right now it's just kind of the beginning of the gardening season so i wanted to get on here as uh, early as i could in the season to kind of get everybody ready for the season right so uh for those of you who don't know our story, me and Ashley, we, uh, or I got sick a while back, like five, uh, eight years ago. And I messed around with, uh, the conventional medicine system for a while before I found medical medium. We've been on medical medium five years, seven years ago is what Ashley's saying. So seven years ago I got sick and then we've been on medical medium for over five years. So 
when we first got on medical medium was when we first started our garden and we just did a little home garden just a little tiny plot in our front yard and that's where it all started we learned how to grow vegetables we even planted a couple fruit trees grow wild uh tried to grow wild things tried to grow a lot of herbs and we finally like perfected our craft or what we thought was going to be our craft, right? So uh, we decided in 2020 that we were going to move up to our family's property, which is almost up near Oregon. And we were going to try farming full time. And it was going to be tricky because up there, we were basically living off grid. So there was no there was no running water. There was no heat. Uh, that we were living in a shipping container home. So yeah, a small little shipping container home. And we had to learn a lot of new things because we were both born in cities and everything was pretty much set up for us when we were born. We didn't have to figure all these things out. So uh, we learned a lot <laughs> that year we, we went up and, and farmed and we had to do it off grid. So we had to pump water to storage tanks to irrigate the crops. Um, we had to set up a, a massive greenhouse. We had never farmed on such a large scale. And the goal was, is we were going to grow all this food and then we were going to take it to grocery stores, restaurants, uh, farmers markets, and we were going to sell it. And that's how we were going to we were going to make an income. So uh, I started getting into uh, these books like um, The Market Gardener um, by J.M. Fortier. Uh, there's a book out there uh, that Elliot Coleman wrote, The New Organic Handbook, I think it's it's called. Um, and then there's Curtis Stone and there's a bunch of other books I read um, with those. But. Yeah, so, you know, we decided we were going to go up there. We were going to try farming, and we had only farmed on this little plot in Oakland, California. And um, we just said, you know what, let's do it. And this was right at the beginning of all the uh, stuff going on with, with um, the plague. And so it was uh, kind of perfectly timed because we were up there while – all the cities were being locked down and uh, we were able to we were able to um, kind of get away from all that, which was great. So anyway, we farmed up there and uh, we learned a lot. Right. That was our first year. And then we came back to the city because up there we didn't have heat. So we couldn't really we couldn't really live up there during the winter because it got really cold. So we came back to the city Ashley got pregnant. We decided we had to stick stick it out. We were trying to sell our house. So we've been here in the city for about a year and a half now back in Oakland. And we started a microgreen operation. And the microgreen operation was a way to make some money while we were here, eventually planning on going back up there. But that never happened. So we've been here. And uh, part of growing microgreens is we started an, uh, an urban farming business where we had two plots of land and uh, the microgreen operation. And that's how we were, that's how we were making an income. And it worked out great. And then we had to sell the house. So the house then got put on the market and we lost our microgreen operation because that was being done at the house in the garage so where we are today is my parents house and in the backyard here is all of the stuff that we're growing and we sell all of our produce to a couple grocery stores in town and then last weekend we had a big plant sale so we grew all these nursery starts put them in six packs and then took them out to the front of the house and did like a, a lemonade stand only for plants. And we did good. We made, made a good amount of money. Um, so that could be something you guys could, could do, you know, if you were just 
you know, if you had a small space and you were limited and you had a little greenhouse where you could get some plants going early, you could start, uh, start with that, you know, grow some nursery starts, just grow more than, than, uh, what you need. Right. And then take those plants and take those plants and just, um, sell them to your neighbors or give them away, whatever you want to do, you know, uh, for us, it was, it was a way to make a little extra, extra cash while we were waiting for the house to sell. Um, so yeah, that's what we're up to now. We're, we're, uh, growing in my parents' backyard. Uh, it's kind of hard to see behind me here, but we've got up front here, we've got an orchard and in the back there is where we grow all of our crops. And, Mainly what we grow is greens, leafy greens. That's our, our main um, our main crop. And then we grow some other things during the summer months. But we try to focus mainly on leafy greens. What I've learned over the years is that's where you can make the most profit. So if you grow a, a, a lot of different varieties of leafy greens, you can sell those and you get multiple cuttings off one bed, meaning if I'm growing a bed of arugula, I could grow that bed. And when it's ready to be harvested, I just come in with some scissors, snip, 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 sell them. And then in like a week to two weeks, that, that arugula that I snipped will come back up and I can get another harvest off of it. So a lot of these crops you can get three or more harvests off one bed, meaning that the amount of money you're making on a lettuce bed is it's more profitable than any other crop out there. And second in line is tomatoes and tomatoes are what uh, everybody looks forward to every summer. So yeah, yeah totally Catherine. Uh, yeah, so uh, greens are an important thing. We know that that greens are important for our bodies because that's how we get a lot of those mineral salts, and those mineral salts are crucial for for healing. And uh, when we were up north, that's pretty much that's pretty much all we we grew was greens. So we ate a lot of salads up north, and I I was still sick when we were up there, so. I, I owe a lot to those greens in getting me better while I was up there. And so um, leafy greens are important. But what I do is I grow uh, different types of greens than what you would normally get in the supermarket. So on the supermarket, you might find like lettuce, spinach, and maybe some specialty greens like arugula. But I'll grow stuff that doesn't necessarily fall into those categories, right? So I'll do my own salad mixes and I'll mix lettuce in with, uh, with maybe some sorrel, sorrels, like a lemon green. Um, we also grow a lot of watercress, which is kind of has that spice that, that arugula spice. We grow a lot of mustard greens, which is also has that spice. And then we'll grow, um, during the winter, we'll grow a lot of like mosh, Mosh is, does not do well during the summer months, but during the winter, it does, does very well. So um, we'll, we'll end up growing a lot of mosh. And uh, what other ones am I missing here? Yeah, we do kale. We'll throw kale in the mix. So, yeah, those are just some of the, some of the, the green mixes that we do. But um, you can charge more for specialty greens because they're special. You know, they, they're stuff that these grocery stores aren't getting. So um, that's why we focused a lot on that. And then you can make your own salad mixes and whatever you have in the garden, that's a green, you throw in that bag and, you know, sell it to the stores. And those were always pretty popular at the market. We would, uh, at the farmer's market, we were selling them for like five bucks a pop. And then at uh, the grocery stores, now we're selling them at $4 each. So typically you're going to sell them less to the grocery stores than what you would sell them to at, um, at the farmer's market. Farmer's market is more retail where the grocery stores are more wholesale. Um, so 
Yeah, but what I wanted to talk about was the channel that we just put together. It's called that gardening channel. Uh, go find it on YouTube. They're going to be nothing but minute long videos, just shorts. The idea is that we're basically going to um, follow what I do through a season all summer long. Yeah, salad in a bag. So it's like um, we buy, we, we get these bags and they've got holes in them. And you want holes in your bags because you want the salad to breathe. And then another tip on like when you're harvesting your, your, um, your leafy greens, um, water like in the early morning or something like that. And then uh, let them dry out before you harvest them. Because if they're wet, they're going to create moisture. The moisture doesn't allow the, the crop to last as long. So um yeah where's the medicine man so if you guys saw our videos we did on with the medicine man they were like three videos where we teach you how to make tinctures because that's something we do with a lot of uh the medicine we grow so we'll grow stuff in the garden here medicine man will make it into tinctures for us and then uh we we consume the tinctures right so the tinctures are all made with uh organic flaxseed, which is what's in all the Vimergy uh, tinctures. And the medicine man has been eager to do another video, but it's not going to be on that gardening channel. I'm going to put it on uh, that root life because that's where the medicine man series started. So we're going to leave it on that root life. And he wants to do a video where he shows you how to take dried herbs, right? The, the first video we did was he was using fresh herbs but he's going to do a video with dried herbs and show you how to make tinctures with dried herbs so um that one is going to be coming this summer we're just waiting for um some dried herbs to show up that he wants to make the video on so yeah medicine man will be coming with some medicine man videos um but right now since it's kind of early in the season and stuff hasn't really um we're, we're just starting to put stuff in the ground here, but we're in California. Our growing zone is a lot different uh, than most other growing zones, right? All the southern growing zones, they probably already have their tomatoes and peppers and eggplant and squash and all that stuff in the ground. Here, we're, we're uh, a little behind. Uh, up at the property, which is up near Oregon, we were about a month behind of northern California, so I have to imagine if you're even further up north, your season hasn't quite taken off yet. But um, since we're early in the season, I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the videos that um, we have going on that gardening channel already. So um, some of the first videos I wanted to put out there were, were focused on how to start seeds, right? Because when I was first learning how to grow, a big problem uh, I ran into immediately was I had all this space and I was going to the nursery and I was spending all this money on plant starts, right? And, and it, um, it, it costs money, right? So how could I start seeds without, without having to go to the nursery every time I wanted a plant, right? You could buy a seed pack with 300 seeds, get 300 plants for four bucks, but I was going to the nursery and getting a six pack for four bucks. So um, I eventually discovered these tools. These are soil blockers. And this is what I used to make, to put together all my seed starts. So this one is a three fourths inch soil blocker. I use this for all my small seeds. And this is a... Uh, I think this is a three-fourth inch soil blocker. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it's in the video. So if you go watch that video, I talk all about it. But that's how I, I start all my seeds, right? So I learned what the tool was, but then I was like, well, you know, the soil at the nurseries, that soil is just filled with animal product, right? And I'm trying to, we're trying to live this, this medical medium lifestyle free of 
these toxic things and do we really know what these animals are being fed right so the animals so the big soil blocker was a two inch blocker but it's in the video so go watch the video but anyway so the um what i what i uh came to the realization of is the soil that we're buying at these nurseries has animal product in it and what are these animals being fed, right? They're being fed GMO corn, soy, wheat. They're being pumped with antibiotics and growth hormones. We've got the streaks in the sky falling on the animals. They're falling on the uh, grass that they're then consuming, right? So, uh, and then you look at like, What's happening to us, right? These toxins, they get passed down from generation to generation to generation, right? So, so let's say like a cow and you're using that cow's poop, right? Well, that cow, say, is a grass-fed cow. Well, what about the past generations? What if some of those past generations of cows were fed GMO corn, GMO oh, wheat, um, what if they were fed all these, these toxic things pumped with growth hormones, antibiotics? Well, that stuff gets passed to the next generation of the cow. So animals are just like us from the standpoint that they carry all of this toxic stuff from past generations. Well, let's go back to the poop. Everybody is using animal manure in all of their, their soil. I mean, you go and buy organic food and most likely it's grown in animal product, right? They use animal poop. They use blood, blood meal, bone meal, uh, bat guano. They're using uh, feather meal. All the amendments, all of the uh, the poop, you know, all that stuff contains toxic, tox, toxic stuff. So, um, do we really want to be using that? You know, and that's when I figured, okay, I got to come up with my own mix, like my own soil mix that's animal product free. And that's when I came up with the veganic seed starting mix. And I did a video on that, on that gardening channel. You got to go over there and you got to watch it and check it out. And it's all about the, the soil, right? And I show people how to make your own soil that's free of animal product. So that's what I used for my soil. I came up with this soil uh, mix that you'll see when you go check out the channel. Then I had the soil blocks and then I got seeds and that's how I started my seeds. And it saved me a ton and ton of money because I wasn't um, reliant on going to the nursery all the time. But it is very important that if, uh, if you are growing, that you should consider growing veganically and that it is possible that you are getting a, uh, there's plenty of plant-based fertilizers out there that will uh, get your plants to grow just as good as fish emulsion or um, animal manure or all these different bone meal and blood meal. You know, those things have a lot of nitrogen in it, but you can get nitrogen from, from plant-based things. You just have to double up your recipe. So, yeah, so those are the first couple of videos that I've done was the, their videos uh, based on kind of like that seed starting process. And this is meant to encourage you guys to grow your own food. You know, now you know the soil that I use. Now you know um, how to make soil blocks. So now you can start your own seeds and get your own garden going. And once again, now you're not as reliant on uh, other people. You know, you're reliant on yourself that you now have the tools in your hands to get your um, get your garden going. And it's more important than ever right now that you guys are starting a garden like right now, like right now is the time that your garden should be getting being put in. So um, get your plants in there start your seeds get them ready to go in the ground um we've pretty much got all our stuff in the ground at this point 
And then uh, all I'm doing from here on out, like I just said, I set up overhead irrigation, uh, drip irrigation. So those are some videos that are going to be coming, showing you guys how to set all that stuff up. I've been doing a bunch of bed flips, so pulling the old stuff out, putting the new stuff in. Um, so I'm going to be showing you guys how I do a bed flip, how much amendments and compost goes in each bed after I do a bed flip. Uh, no, I'd say, so there's certain crops. So the question is, is, is it too late to start from seed? It depends on where you are, right? So, uh, if you're somewhere, uh, where the season's just getting going right now, and maybe you have a short season, yeah, maybe it is better to buy some stuff from the nursery, like tomatoes, like eggplant, like peppers, because those are, cucumbers as well. Those are kind of your crops that um, I usually get those started like early March and I'll start them on heat pads uh, under grow lights and I'll get a head start on the season. So then once they've grown to a certain height, you know, maybe six inches, something like that, I put them in those one gallon pots, which I did a video on this. <clears throat> it was my last video's uh, called potting up. And what, what I do is before those crops grow in the ground, I put them in a one gallon pot. I let them grow in the one gallon pot until they get tall enough to where I put them in the ground. And like tomatoes, for example, you know, I want to get those tomatoes maybe a foot, foot long before they go in the ground, but you don't have to do that. You could go to the nursery, you could get some tomatoes and stick them in the ground and they're going to grow just fine. You have plenty of time still to, to, to grow crops. Um, I just transplanted some tomatoes in California. We can kind of get uh, two successions of tomatoes. So in some cases, you can have tomatoes year round here in the Bay Area. Um, it's not... <laughs> not every place is like that. So yeah, uh, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, and cucumbers, I usually get going early. Um, but you can certainly start a lot of other things and not have any problem growing those. Um, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, kale is one that grows great all summer. Um, squash, we do pretty good with our, our, our summer squash. Winter squash usually goes in at the end of May, mid-May. That's usually when I'll put that stuff in. Um, but yeah, the main summer, the staple summer crops are like peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And so that's what we put a lot of in the garden here. And then I've built a structure where I put all my tomato plants on top of this structure and I let them trellis down and I'll do another, I'll do a video on, um, I'll do a video on that later in the season. So you guys can check out how I, how I'm doing that. But yeah, the goal here is I just wanted to hop on this live and just talk to you guys about gardening and the importance of it, of doing it now. Like, you know, if you're going to garden, you got to get your crops in now. So then you'll be ready for, um, you'll be ready for the season. And, uh, you know, everybody's in their own sort of growing zone. So it just really depends on your growing zone. But, uh, so if you guys have any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer some questions for those of you that are on the live. Are you guys growing stuff out there? Do the people on the live right now, do you guys have gardens? Are you getting stuff in the garden right now? I know everybody's a little bit different where they can grow, but... Favorite winter squash to grow? Well, this year, after, if you've seen our, on, on our That Root Life channel, we, we've done some... Uh, I did a, a mono cleanse for 28 days where I ate nothing but squash, 
artich or uh, asparagus and uh, and Brussels sprouts. And by far, my favorite squash out there right now is the kabocha squash. It's the orange kabocha. And so we're growing a lot of that this year, but those will go in probably like mid-May into May and they won't be ready until the fall. So like beginning of October, end of September usually is when you'll start to see some of those, those pop up. But I also like a uh, delicata, the delicata squash is, is also one of the favorites and um, the honey nut squash is also a favorite. And yeah, those are kind of like my top three. Go watch that video if you haven't seen it. I, I lay out like my top 10 favorite squash. Chipmunks eating my tomato plants every year. Hmm. Well, that's a hard one. And uh, see here, because I've been I've been breaking down all my compost here, I've been getting rats, like these these big rats. And I've been catching them in these cages. And I've been driving them up to the woods and dropping them off in the woods. And we've caught 14, 14 rats. And so they act like the chipmunks. But what these guys were doing is I'd, I'd direct seed a bunch of, of greens, and then they would come by and eat the tops of all my greens. It sucks. But yeah, I get they eat the tomatoes too, or they just like eat part of the tomato and then just it drops on the ground. One solution for that is you know i don't bother with them but uh you could put up like some some netting like if you're trellising your tomatoes upward you could wrap some some netting around the tomatoes i don't know if you're growing them in a tomato cage but if you grow them in a tomato cage you can wrap some uh some netting around that we grow ours vertically and i'll do some videos on that but we pull the suckers as they're growing and then they just grow straight up. And then I have a, uh, a, these posts with a, a platform up top and they, they basically grow all the way up to that platform. Um, but yeah, that, that's one solution. I know they eat our cherries here and I've been telling my dad to just get some netting, put it over the trees and, and they won't mess with it. Let's see, grape tomatoes, butternut squash that came from the compost. Yeah. Well, we grow, uh, here we can grow big tomatoes. So we grow uh, like the heirloom type tomatoes, but then we can also grow, uh, we like to grow a lot of cherry tomatoes because they're just, you know, they're just fun. You walk around the in the garden and you can just pick those little cherry tomatoes and pop them in and and they taste so good. And I think my favorite is is the same favorite as Anthony. If you listen to Anthony's gardening uh, episode he did, he was talking about the Sun Gold. Sun Gold is like my favorite tomato, hands down. The sweetest tomato out there. I'm trying another uh, cherry tomato called um, Gold Nugget, which supposedly is pretty sweet. Kind of sweet like the, uh, the Sun Gold. I'm growing another one called the Napa Chardonnay. That's a cherry tomato. And then for my big tomatoes, I'm growing uh, Berkeley tie dye. And then uh, the other one I'm growing is uh, uh, Sun Gold, but it's a Sun Gold big tomato. So it's like a two ounce Sun Gold tomato, right? You, we're like used to those little cherry tomatoes. This is like a big Sun Gold. So those are some of the varieties that we're growing for cucumbers. I love um, the lemon cucumbers. And my favorite cucumber is the apple cucumber. Apple cucumber tastes like apples. The skin is like sweet. It's it's super good. And here I noticed that like uh, tomato or uh, cucumbers grow well, but you're supposed to get like 15 on a vine. And I, I typically don't get that. Usually powdery mildew or something like that wipes me out before I get my full harvest. But um, yeah, those are some of my favorite cucumbers. What do you think about growing on a septic system? Yeah, you know, uh, I wouldn't. It, it'd be kind of that same, that same idea 
of uh, using animal manure in your soil. You, you never know what's leaching out of there. Uh, but what you could do is you could get some grow bags or get some uh, five gallon, 10 gallon uh, plastic pots and just grow in that. And the roots won't be going into the into the, the septic system and you could just you could just grow it grow it in some containers that'd be my my suggestion yeah oh yeah apple cucumbers yeah they're a favorite uh could you could do raised beds yep Catherine. yeah you could put some raised beds in uh you just you know line the line the bottom with some sort of like uh I know they have like a non-toxic cloth, so you can just line the bottom with some cloth. I um, This year I have, you can kind of see like in the background here, this little thing. I, I took, um, I pulled some, some guy was throwing out a bunch of fence boards. So I went and picked up all the fence board. And I made these raised garden beds out of the fence board with legs on them and stuff. And they've worked out, um, They've worked out just phenomenal. Like the stuff is just growing like crazy in it. And what's cool is you can move them. So you can move them around. So if, you know, part of the season you're putting something in there that wants a lot of sun, well, you move it in a sunny spot. If, you know, it's just, it, it wants to be in a spot because you want to avoid the sun, you just move it in a spot where you're going to avoid the sun. So I'm going to make a bunch more of these, uh, these beds through the season and get some stuff in them. But yeah, so I hope that was helpful. You know, I, I'm just trying to be helpful here. I, I, I have a lot of experience uh, farming and gardening and, and um, I thought this live would be helpful to um, help you guys learn about gardening and farming. And another thing that we just, we just launched today is we... I'm offering my services. So if you would like garden coaching, then I'm offering garden coaching to everybody out there. And uh, the way it's set up is it's set up on a on a, a donation basis. You know, I understand that if you're if you're out there and you're struggling and you're on the medic living the medical medium lifestyle, it's it's hard, right? Like you're trying to heal yourself and you're, that affects your work and that affects your income. And you're spending all this additional money on, uh, on fruits and veggies and wild foods and herbs. And you're taking all these tinctures and that stuff gets expensive, right? So I've set it up. So we have a sliding scale. Um, so what we're charging is Fifty dollars to a hundred dollars per hour. Um, if you're, if you know, if you can't afford that, just reach out to me. I, I mean, I want to make it work for everybody. I don't want to hold anybody back from learning how to garden and and benefiting from from growing your own food because I think it's that important. So, even if that pricing is like, there's no way I can afford that. We even do thirty minute sessions where. You can do for 30 minutes and I charge $25 to $45 on a sliding scale for a 30-minute session. And then if you wanted continued support, what we're doing is we've created um, like a telegram group where, uh, a, well, it's not really a group. It's a one-on-one -on -one session. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, to get continued support, so let's say you set up a call and yeah, the video is going to be saved. Ashley uh, is going to put it up on uh, Instagram and it, we're up on YouTube right now on uh, that root life. So yeah, it's, it, it'll be up there, but um, yeah, we're going to set up a telegram messaging using the telegram messaging app. So if you want to continue support, we charge, we're going to be charging like, 30 bucks to 50 bucks for a 30 day pass, which, which you get one-on-one -on -one, um, 
access one-on-one -on -one with me and we can exchange photos, we can exchange text, we can exchange voice. Um, so if you, you know, if the meeting was good and, and, and you liked everything you heard and you just feel like you just need that continued support, then you can sign up for something like that. Once again, it is on a complete sliding scale. You know, I, I was sick once, I couldn't work once, you know, Ashley was making all the money. I was on a couch for a year and a half. So I understand uh, what being sick is like. And it is more important to me that, that you grow your own food than, than just throwing those costs out the window. So if you can't afford it, message us and we'll, we'll figure something out to, to get you a one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you, uh, you're, you're learning stuff. And I plan on doing these lives. Um, I'm going to try to do them weekly, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how that works out with, uh, with the baby and stuff. But, um, yeah, so that's really it. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm happy. I saw Amber hopped on. So where I got this idea to do the garden coaching was from Amber. So good job, Amber. We, uh, we, we set it up and, uh, we're, we're live to do garden coaching now. So we really appreciate you coming up with that idea and thinking of us and suggesting it. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so that's something new. It's on our website. The website, the mobile version is still under construction. But if you go to the desktop version, you'll see on there, you'll see all the different packages that we have. And then I even included like a section on our expertise. So every topic that uh, we are experienced in. So if you jump on the website and you're like, well, I I don't really know what I'm looking for. I don't really know what, where to start with the gardening stuff. Well, you know, it's all listed out in those topics. So uh, all you do is submit your info. And if you say, hey, I want help in this, we'll help you in that. But it's really um, it's really whatever, whatever you want to talk about, I'm here to talk about with you. So, yeah, so that's live now. So, um you know, reach out if you need some garden coaching, but I, I'm planning on doing these lives on a continual basis through the season. So if more things come up, wait till the live and you can always ask me questions during these lives as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Ashley will upload everything onto Instagram and it's, it's going to be uploaded on YouTube in case you miss this. You can go back and watch it. And that's it. So have a good one. We'll see you next time. See ya.